name is Carl Wolf, and I was a precision electronics photographic repairman with a top secret crypto clearance in the United States Air Force. I was stationed at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. In 1965, um, in mid-1965, I was loaned to the Lunar Orbiter Project at NASA on Langley Field. Uh, Dr. Colley was in charge of that project. They had problems with a piece of uh, electronic equipment that was bottlenecking their production of photographs. I went to the facility, and when I walked into the facility, there were scientists from all over the world. I was stunned, actually, to see people at a NASA project uh, from all over the world. It didn't make any sense to me initially. Um, I was taken into the laboratory where the equipment was malfunctioning. I couldn't repair it in the dark. I asked to have it removed. A uh, airman second class was in the dark room at that time. I was also an airman second class. Um, I was interested in how the whole process functioned, how the data got from the lunar orbiter to the laboratory. I asked the young man if he described the process to me. He did. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me, um, in a very distressed way, um, by the way, we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom-shaped buildings, spherical buildings, and towers. And at, at that point, I was very concerned because I knew we were working on compartmentalized security. He had breached security, and I was actually frightened at that moment and I did not question him any further. And a few moments later, someone did come into the room. Um, I worked there for three more days, and I remember going home and naively thinking, I can't wait to hear about this on the evening news. <laughs> and here it is, more than 30 years later, and I hope we hear about it tonight. And I will testify under oath before Congress that what I'm saying is the truth. Good morning, everyone. My name is Donna Hare, and I worked at Philco Ford Aerospace for, from 1967 to 1981. During that time, I was a design illustrator, draftsman. Uh, I did the launch slides and landing slides, and also projecting plotting boards, lunar maps for NASA. We were a contractor, but it, most of the time I worked on site excuse me, in Building 8. I had the opportunity to do extra work during downtime, which was between missions, and I walked into a photo lab, which was the NASA lab, across the hallway. I had a secret clearance, which is not that high, but I was able to go into restricted areas, which this was. Uh, at the time, I was talking to one of the techs in there, and he drew my attention to a photograph, that a NASA photograph, it had a dot on it, and I said, what is that? Well, he drew my attention to it, and, he, and I said, is that a, a dot on the emulsion? And he said, and he's smiling, and he has his hands crossed, and he said, uh, round dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And this was an aerial photograph of the Earth, I'm assuming the Earth, because it had pine trees on it, and the shadows of the craft, or whatever it was, were in the same angle as the trees. And by its very nature, UFO, and I wanted to clarify that to a gentleman that was talking to me, means unidentified. So I did not know what this was. But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pes pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they wanted to get rid of. Uh, after that, I decided I would ask questions to other people that work there. And I found that I had to ask them away from the site and not on site. A guard told me that he was asked to burn some photographs and not to look at them. And there was a guard, another guard guarding him, who was in green fatigues, watching him burn the photographs. And he said he was too tempted. He looked at one, and it was a picture of a UFO. And he was very descriptive. I can go into that later with anyone. Uh, he immediately was hit in the head, and he had a big gash in his forehead. He was knocked out. 
and he's terrified, so he would have to be protected. Uh, another incident, I knew someone in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts. He told me that the Apollo astronauts saw crap on the moon when we landed, and that is what he told me. And he also was afraid, he said, that the astronauts are told to keep this quiet. They're not allowed to talk about it. So I do want to let you know that I worked out there for a number of years, and this, I ran into this. So it's not something everyone knows that works out there for a long time. My boss didn't know about it. Uh, some people that sat right next to me didn't know about it. It's, it's very strange because I don't know how they can do it, but they can let some people know about it and then others not. I'm willing to testify before Congress that what I'm saying is true, and I uh, thank you very much. Thank you.
Esta fue la verdad, la única y secreta verdad. Aquel 21 de julio de 1969, Armstrong y Aldrin se alejaron escasos metros del módulo, filmando esta increíble construcción. Esta película de 14 minutos jamás fue difundida por NASA. Mirlo Rojo fue uno de los pocos norteamericanos que tuvo acceso a ella. A escasos metros sí del águila. Y no fue casualidad. Todo estaba minuciosamente programado. Estas misteriosas ruinas, como otras igualmente filmadas por los restantes Apolos, habían sido fotografiadas con anterioridad por las diferentes ondas automáticas. Una de ellas, la Surveyor 5, lanzada el 8 de septiembre de 1967, fue decisiva. Alunizó en el Mar de la Tranquilidad, muy cerca de esta construcción, enviando 19.000 fotografías. Edificios en ruinas. Edificios en la superficie de la luna. Edificios aparentemente de una gran antigüedad. Pero, ¿quién los había levantado? Nosotros los humanos, obviamente no. Solo quedaba una respuesta. Esto era obra de una civilización no humana. habían satisfecho la primera parte de su diabólico plan ahora quedaba la segunda
Según mi confidente, los astronautas procedieron a lo programado. Recogieron muestras de los muros, tomaron medidas y se retiraron. Peso constituido por 